13 Dark Secrets from the Cast of Full House. Number 13. Not So Innocent Dad. Danny Tanner is the cleaning obsessed Goody Two Shoes father on the 90s sitcom, but actor Bob Saget is actually far from his on screen persona. From raunchy stand up routines, sexual tweets, and wild antics, Saget admitted in his memoir, Dirty Daddy The Chronicles of a Family Man Turned Filthy Comedian, that being on the show was like playing Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. During meetings with writers and producers, he would draw penises on the scripts and constantly play pranks on his co stars, John Stamos and Dave Coulier. Saget described a time when the three of them ransacked the prop room fridge and took turns inhaling nitrous oxide after discovering six cans of whipped cream. Since the show ended, Saget wasted no time in breaking from his once clean portrayed image on TV. Number 12. Uncle Jesse and Aunt Becky in Real Life John Stamos and Lori Laughlin played our favorite aunt and uncle. In fact, they exhibited such great on-screen chemistry, it disappointed many fans that they never became a real-life couple. However, back in June 2013, Stamos revealed in a Huffington Post live interview that his co-star could be the one that had gotten away. He added that while he meant no disrespect to Laughlin and her husband, during the show's run, he never got married, divorced, and their timing wasn't right. However, they did go on one date to Disneyland when they were both single. He also admitted that the thought that it could be something more never entered their minds. Overall, the two remained close friends since the show's run, and even reprised their roles for the Full House spinoff series, Fuller House, on Netflix. Number 11. Jody Sweeten's Drug Addiction in an all-tell memoir, Jodie Sweeten, who portrayed spunky middle child Stephanie, opened up about her substance abuse. She stated after Full House wrapped, she became mentally unstable. Sweeten began using cocaine while in high school and then crystal meth. She described that drinking alcohol first gave her the confidence that she was searching for, and that drinking became a gateway for her to get into drugs. She even detailed moments of when she snorted meth while in a bathroom stall during the 2004 premiere of Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen's movie, New York Minute. At the time, she said she had people fooled and did a good job of concealing her addiction. She finally got sober for her children and cited that she didn't want her addiction to get in the way of being a mother. Since then, the actress has made a full recovery and spoke actively about her experience in the entertainment world to help others. Number 10. Not So Lucky in Love even though Jodie Sweeten cleaned up her act, she hasn't been quite so lucky in the love department, though. She got a divorce from her first husband, Sean Holgan, in 2006, only to remarry again two years later to Cody Herpin. Their romance didn't last long, and they separated after being together for only two years. She went on to marry musician Morty Coyle, only to divorce him a year later. Sweeten became engaged to Justin Hodak, and it seemed like these two were meant to be. However, they split and called off their engagement in March 2017 after Hodak was arrested for the third time. His downward spiral resulted in relationship troubles that included suicidal tendencies, illegally owning a firearm, and violating the restraining order Sweeten filed. Maybe this time around, Sweeten will find the love she deserves. Number 9. Struggling with Obesity we watched the oldest Tanner daughter, DJ, played by Candace Cameron Brewer, grow up on screen. We were right there when she tackled a number of first issues, which included going to high school, dating, and heading off to college. But some of those struggles were actually all too real for the actress. Back in 2011, Bure told People Magazine that she struggled with her weight while on the show. She stated that she hated the fullness in her face and didn't like what she felt. She admitted that she comforted herself with food, saying it was an emotional issue. She started shedding the pounds after getting help from a personal trainer and stuck to an eating plan. By the show's eighth season, she was able to maintain her desired weight goal. Today, the actress is still naturally slim thanks to her weight and training cardio, as well as her strong willpower to choosing healthy foods. Number 8. John Stamos tried to get the twins fired. Even though John Stamos displayed a soft heart for his niece Michelle on the show, it wasn't always that way. His confession appeared on the Lifetime special, The Unauthorized Full House Story. He stated that he requested for new infants after the twins cried a lot and soiled diapers ruined the shot. He also said it was hard to film these scenes consecutively and yelled to get them out. Even after getting a few infants in, the other babies didn't quite work out on set either. Eventually, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen were brought back on again and ended up skyrocketing to fame. Number 7. The Olsen Twins Were Not Welcomed Back 
Full House was on air for eight long seasons and fans couldn't get enough. However, once a spin-off series was greenlit for production, all of the original stars were on board for filming, except for the Olsen twins. Back in 2015, according to Radar Online, a close source to John Stamos revealed there was some drama in the air that resulted in the Olsen twins not coming back. Out of all the castmates, Mary Kate and Ashley were the only ones who didn't remain close to the other co-stars. Lori Laughlin, who played Aunt Becky, revealed to Access Hollywood that it didn't matter how much the twins were paid to reprise their roles because they didn't care. Speculations claim that twins skyrocketing to fame and high egos have been a factor as they told the show's producers that returning to the series was not in their best interests. Number 6. A Real Jokester during an Ask Me Anything on Reddit, Dave Coulier revealed some not-safe-for-work stories regarding him and his Full House pals. For Bob Saget's 50th birthday, Coulier and other friends picked him up in a limo. Coulier stripped down and got naked and sat in the limo waiting for him. When he got in, Coulier put his penis through an 8x10 picture of John Stamos while everyone laughed. When they got to the hotel, they gave Stamos a cut-out picture, and he stuck his tongue through the same exact hole where Coulier did. Then finally, Saget showed him the pictures they took. Safe to say that Stamos probably washed his mouth out with soap for weeks. Number 5. DJ and Steve were never supposed to break up. At least that's what Full House creator Jeff Franklin said and what he wanted. But after he left the show, DJ and Steve broke up during the series because they just grew apart. Many fans felt the heartache when the two split since they were perfect for each other. Franklin stated he didn't understand why the producers felt the need to break them up and replace Steve's character with the wealthy and nerdy competitor, Nelson, who bought DJ's attention in the show with extravagant gifts. Franklin added that he felt the audience didn't enjoy this at all, that he loved for them to stay together and leaving the show was a big regret. However, Steve did make a comeback when he decided to take DJ to the prom in the series finale. The heartfelt moment stuck with fans and Scott Wanger also managed to reprise his role as Steve in the spin-off Fuller House, so we can't get enough of Steve. Number 4. Mary-Kate Olsen Linked to Heath Ledger's Death Even though Full House actress Mary-Kate Olsen or her sister Ashley were not in Heath Ledger's apartment when he died, there has been a strange connection between the starlet and Ledger. Masseuse Diana Wollison discovered Ledger's body in his home and dialed Mary-Kate before phoning police. But why? It's that she called the actress because they were friends and asked what to do. According to People magazine, the two were more than just friends and were casually together three months prior. Police stated in a report that Woolison made three calls to Olsen before contacting paramedics. Their affair was kept in secret, but they were interested in making it exclusive when they felt it was right. Number 3. John Stamos Drug Battles in a radio interview with Howard Stern back in January 2016, the actor talked openly about his struggle to quit Ambien. The medication is supposed to aid sleep problems, and he is now clean from all drugs following a 30-day stay at a treatment center months earlier. He started the treatment program after he was arrested for driving under the influence. He claimed that he couldn't sleep for weeks at a time when trying to get off of it. Even though he was lucky enough to evade a prison term, the actor admitted that the DUI charge was something he was deeply ashamed of, stating he could have hurt someone. Number 2. Almost Father to Be and Hidden Sex Tape In the same radio interview with Howard Stern, actor John Stamos also revealed that he almost had a child with the woman he hooked up with in his 20s. The ladies' man actor has no kids and says he's usually cautious. However, the woman got an abortion, and Stamos said that even though it wasn't really his choice, it was kind of a mutual decision as well as bad timing. He went on to say that his drug issues were a contributing factor to his stunted growth and may be a reason why he had no children and is no longer married. But children are the only thing that's missing from his life. The actor was once married before getting a divorce, and he went on to date a list of women. Stamos claimed the females he dated pushed him into making a few sex tapes, but instead of distributing them for money, he says he keeps the hard drive in a safe out of public reach. Number 1. Another season was in the works. Full House ran on air for eight seasons, and it was initially going to have a ninth season, but the new season was going to show up on the new WB network as a classic show to help spark up the network and new lineup. But John Stamos didn't like this idea or how the show was being released from ABC, which is a top three network. Stamos then announced that the eighth season would be his last. In addition, Candace Cameron Bure was hesitant about doing another season and planned on doing guest appearances since she was planning on leaving for college. Bob Saget also felt hesitant about doing another season as well. After Bure and Stamos had announced their departures, this prompted the other castmates to call for an end as well. The writers also felt the series had gone as far as it could have gone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. 13 Dark Secrets from the Cast of Full House. 
Number 13. Not So Innocent Dad Danny Tanner is the cleaning-obsessed, goody-two-shoes father on the 90s sitcom, but actor Bob Saget is actually far from his on-screen persona. From raunchy stand-up routines, sexual tweets, and wild antics, Saget admitted in his memoir, Dirty Daddy, The Chronicles of a Family Man Turned Filthy Comedian, that being on the show was like playing Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. During meetings with writers and producers, he would draw penises on the scripts and constantly play pranks on his co-stars, John Stamos and Dave Coulier. Saget described a time when the three of them ransacked the prop room fridge and took turns inhaling nitrous oxide after discovering six cans of whipped cream. Since the show ended, Saget wasted no time in breaking from his once clean portrayed image on TV. Number 12. Uncle Jesse and Aunt Becky in Real Life John Stamos and Lori Laughlin played our favorite aunt and uncle. In fact, they exhibited such great on-screen chemistry, it disappointed many fans that they never became a real-life couple. However, back in June 2013, Stamos revealed in a Huffington Post live interview that his co-star could be the one that had gotten away. He added that while he meant no disrespect to Laughlin and her husband, during the show's run, he never got married, divorced, and their timing wasn't right. However, they did go on one date to Disneyland when they were both single. He also admitted that the thought that it could be something more never entered their minds. Overall, the two remained close friends since the show's run, and even reprised their roles for the Full House spinoff series, Fuller House, on Netflix. Number 11. Jodie Sweeten's Drug Addiction in an all-tell memoir, Jodie Sweeten, who portrayed spunky middle child Stephanie, opened up about her substance abuse. She stated after Full House rap, she became mentally unstable. Sweeten began using cocaine while in high school and then crystal meth. She described that drinking alcohol first gave her the confidence that she was searching for, and that drinking became a gateway for her to get into drugs. She even detailed moments of when she snorted meth while in a bathroom stall during the 2004 premiere of mary Kate and Ashley Olsen's movie, New York Minute. At the time, she said she had people fooled and did a good job of concealing her addiction. She finally got sober for her children and cited that she didn't want her addiction to get in the way of being a mother. Since then, the actress has made a full recovery and spoke actively about her experience in the entertainment world to help others. Number 10. Not So Lucky in Love even though Jodie Sweeten cleaned up her act, she hasn't been quite so lucky in the love department, though. She got a divorce from her first husband, Sean Holgan, in 2006, only to remarry again two years later to Cody Herpin. Their romance didn't last long, and they separated after being together for only two years. She went on to marry musician Morty Coyle, only to divorce him a year later. Sweeten became engaged to Justin Hodak, and it seemed like these two were meant to be. However, they split and called off their engagement in March 2017 after Hodak was arrested for the third time. His downward spiral resulted in relationship troubles that included suicidal tendencies, illegally owning a firearm, and violating the restraining order Sween filed. Maybe this time around, Sween will find the love she deserves. Number 9. Struggling with Obesity we watched the oldest Tanner daughter, DJ, played by Candace Cameron Brewer, grow up on screen. We were right there when she tackled a number of first issues, which included going to high school, dating, and heading off to college. But some of those struggles were actually all too real for the actress. Back in 2011, Bure told People magazine that she struggled with her weight while on the show. She stated that she hated the fullness in her face and didn't like what she felt. She admitted that she comforted herself with food, saying it was an emotional issue. She started shedding the pounds after getting help from a personal trainer and stuck to an eating plan. By the